nothing like some fresh mizuna to wake you up in the morning beautiful I've got a sneaking feeling I'm not going to get a great deal filmed out here today. The wind's really getting up and we've got some really bad weather coming tomorrow. I'm not complaining, it's going to bring a lot of rain with it and that's something that we really need. But I just want to show you a few hits and misses that we've got this week. And also um, want to point out a little bit of um, an opportunity for a YouTuber of the week. I've seen a great video this week that I want to share with you. But let's go and have a look at the stuff that ain't quite working out right. Cabbage moth has got stuck into my beautiful Brussels sprouts during the week. Um, I've been working solidly this week, so basically I've been leaving the house when it's dark and coming home when it's dark. So I'm not getting an opportunity to have a look. Um, looks like some of the exclusion netting um, managed to be penetrated, which was disappointing. But look, I picked them all off, um, or at least all the ones I've found so far, and hopefully the plant will recover. But as you can see, it's going to take a little while and it's going to set these plants back. I planted this larger bed out with a really good crop of beetroot. The seedlings took a little while to get started, but they're really quite dense now in some of the rows. But we had earwigs get in and they've taken a lot out again while I haven't been around to keep an eye on things. Where the spaces are fitted in, I'm soaking some more beet seed now um, to add it in, but in the short term we're going to leave um, some silver beet that's gotten in by itself. Um, and also I bought some kohlrabi seedlings in just to fill some of these gaps and why not? The space is there, we'll use it, but definitely needs a good weed. Peas are really starting to get going now, so I'm happy about that. Some of them haven't done quite as well. So this plant here, for example, hasn't gone that great. But at least the broccoli seedlings that are in here getting ready for sort of marshalling through winter and into spring to flower are seemingly pretty well um, established now. And we're not seeing any real problems with cabbage moth larvae. Scattered carrot seed that I collected from a plant just around the corner is germinating really quite nicely. You can sort of see it's really starting to appear now. You can even see a remnant seeds there that are just starting to pop out of the soil and some beautiful plants all over the place. Interestingly enough, we've had a volunteer tomato germinate in the last few months of it, well last month or so of autumn and it's still holding on. It's not too discoloured but I can't see it lasting. Here in the Scrap Palace the Mizuna that I put in to one of the end beds is going a cracker. Very, very similarly, cost lettuce is going well and some silver beet. It's going really nicely. The Davidson plum that we got about three weeks ago is going beautifully. It's throwing new shoots here in the Scrap Palace. It's amazing how the color of the new shoots on this plant almost translucent with red veins and you can sort of see the thorny appendages that are starting to form very much like they do here on the parent or the actual mature sections of the plant. It's an incredible thing this Davidson plum and I'm going to love seeing it in the garden. And I am here in South Australia. Um, the thermometer here is saying inside the Scrap Palace we're sitting at about 22 degrees which is really nice considering it's about 11 and windy outside at the moment. Um, the pot here with the Davidson Plum that I was just talking about, it's incredible to feel in this space how warm the pot surfaces are. And particularly here for Kate as well, the beautiful Kate who will be soon going out. I've thought about maybe leaving Kate in the Scrap Palace over winter and getting her out in spring. Um, Kylie and Kevin out there they're doing all right. They're still shooting, which is really good to see, but I'm imagining they'll start to go semi-dormant soon. We've taken some slip cuttings from our sweet potatoes. We have a white variety. Um, those of you who don't know, who don't live in Australia or New Zealand, um, or you know, definitely the sort of Pacific regions, um, this sweet potato is actually referred to as kumra. 
Um, so our neighbour, is, who's a Kiwi, constantly reminds us of that. But as you can see, the slips have settled in well into these pots to start generating. So we've got some beautiful new plants um, to carry over into the new season. Barney, my banana, that Melanie so kindly bought for me is doing really, really well. Our mangoes that we got from the communal garden sale, little bit of black tipping, a little, they're being touched a little bit by the cold, but they're doing really, really well. Um, all these leaves are transitioning into new growth. Behind them here, behind Barney, you can see the other bed in the Scrap Palace. We've got some broccoli ticking over there, some beautiful cos lettuce, um, some pak choy, and of course, weeds, stinging nettles. But I'm not worried about that. Every year I make a stinging nettle tea. Um, I usually probably about 20 litres worth, which is a nice pick-me-up in the beginning of spring for a lot of young plants. It acts like a tonic, very much to when you can add it to comfrey, things like that. So it's a really good idea. If you've got nettles, don't necessarily hate them, maybe use them. Just noticed here that our dragon fruit has a stink bug on it, or a harlequin bug. So that isn't a good sign for the scrap palace. I'm really going to have to keep an eye out here. Rain's finally got here. It's such an incredible thing. Scrap Palace is really the only place to be at the end of the day. The, the rain has definitely arrived from the wind earlier. Um, just gotten quiet enough for a couple of minutes in here to have a quick chat with you all out there. So I just wanted to share with you my video of the week. This video relates to loss, particularly loss of stock, but it, it could be loss of anything. Property, maybe loss in a fire, theft, anything. So Lisa from Yogi Hollow Farm um, is sharing the experience of her and her husband Ryan with relation to losing stock and how that affected them um, through a traumatic event. So check it out. Um, the video is called Reality Check, Loss on the Homestead, Hashtag Loss. Check it out. It really moved me um, and I think it teaches some lessons that perhaps we all need to hear. Take care. Bit of a sad note, but I uh, hope you've enjoyed today's tour of the things that aren't necessarily going too well on the garden. Gonna get on with my hot coffee. See you later.